independent record stores were a way to get away from uh, <coughs> sort of the pop culture frenzy of what the record companies were trying to shove down everyone's throat via MTV or radio then. And what was cool about independent places is that you get to know the clientele there and they, they'll, they'll know your taste and they go, hey, we found some Captain Beefheart from Zappa's band, like you just kind of let them know what you're looking for over a period of time. And these are the local guys where you, where you live close by. And they'll sort of keep keep a, an eye out for particular items, like I collect a lot of Blue Note jazz stuff, which hasn't been released on CD, so I'm always like, if you find any of these titles that fall under the radar, they're for me, put them aside. So that's, to, to build the proper record collection where you got a a lot of cool bells and whistles that are hard to find stuff is kind of the the heart of a great record collection is finding things that your friends don't have and you can drop on and be like oh check this out what I found you know stuff that you just don't come across every day and that being said the way we travel because we're in every single major city along the way uh, we can sort of creep into these other places and, and, and you know go oh our place back home didn't have this sort of death metal catalog or a punk catalog that they might specialize in or something like that so by traveling we get to you know either fly home with a ton of vinyl and it's very difficult or make it easy and, and get dropped off by the bus. Were there any particular record stores that you remember going to as a kid? Yeah well around South Bend Indiana like Niles area there's a there's a place called Trax Records and they're still they're still going. I think they're on uh, McKinley Avenue in South Bend, and they've been at various spots throughout the last 30 years, but they've always had a great record collection. I probably picked through it a thousand times, you know, kind of thing. I think I've gotten everything good out of there that I could get. But uh, generally, you know, you got to get to Chicago to get the real vast collections where, where some guy has a lot of investment there. Um, there's a place on Belmont Avenue in Chicago called Groovin High, and it's this this old cat who, who just really knows his his collection. Everything's clean. Everything's in uh, you know vinyl sleeves. It's just really really tight. You can he's got you know instead of just bins of stuff that's it's not alphabetized and loose. It's like he's very strategic. There's no junk vinyl in there. That's why you can you know charge a pretty penny for some of the stuff. So I like stuff that's more specific, clean, you know stuff for for the collector side of things. You know. But then, if you're the new, if you're the newcomer to the scene as far as collecting vinyl, uh, vinyl, I suggest go right towards the 99 cent bins, get all your favorite stuff that you had uh, digitally, and get it analog. I mean, I've been collecting records since I was four, like where I could really understand what this thing was, and I wanted more of them. So I, I have every record that I've ever collected since four, and I'm 35 now. So that's a, that's just a lot of years of collecting, and you know I'd come across, say say someone passes away, and you end up with their collection, and someone you inherit someone's collection. It's very much a piece of their soul. So I really try to keep everything very much alphabetical order. If you take out one, you got to put it back. So it's not like a messy because I've got you know over four thousand titles. So if you if you don't alphabetize it, just everything gets lost in the mix. So everything's very strategically alphabetized. The easy way to, to keep it in track is just alphabetize the say you pull out ACDC you just pull out the record right behind it go play the record and then you remember where it was in the a lot of people don't don't get that one it's real simple